The force will be with you, always. everyone and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David and with me as always is Darth Austin. Hello everyone. Welcome everyone to our uh, post-holiday, sort of more like in-between holiday podcast. Uh, we we kind of skipped a week there, had, uh, had holidays take care of Christmas and uh, now we're bumping into uh, New Year's here this week, aren't we? God, it was a bloodbath. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Just limbs flying everywhere, trying I ki- to. Find I killed that them all. Damn TV, <laughs> killed them all. Oh yeah, it's uh, it was an interesting holiday season, um, and yeah, we we just kind of kind of got a little off kilter there. Uh, weren't able to really get together and and do a podcast for a week, and uh, yeah, so now we're kind of back on the on the grind a little bit here and trying to get <laughs> trying to get resituated. So, pop in a little Jedi Council, how. How have you been the past couple weeks? Oh, let's see. Okay, that's exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that expresses the holidays perfectly. Just you can imagine a blank stare. Yeah. You know, a thousand yard stare. <laughs> well, I mean, as time goes by and you get older, the holidays tend to seem to get a little harder, a little a little bit less fun. Yeah, I mean, it was much better as a kid when we didn't have to schedule anything, worry yep. about anything, just eat a bunch of food, play with our toys, and pass out, Ugh. watch some football. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. It definitely gets a little bit more more complicated as, as time goes by, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was it was okay. Definitely, uh, you know, had our get-togethers, had big mm-hmm. old... Big old meals still exchanged a few few gifts. You got me uh, basically every wrench known to exist in both metric and uh, standard. Yeah, because you got one of those trucks. It's one of those years. It's like I don't know what you are. It, it, probably it, mainly uh, well, it Japanese is weird. crap, but who knows? Well, so. it was it was built in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, so you didn't need that metric set. That's well, okay. No, You'll I, find a use for it. Yeah, <laughs> there are a couple things that I've I've discovered are metric. Uh it's it's just kind of weird how they put together vehicles. But yeah, I I needed to re replenish and re re uh rebuy tools. Uh some of my old stuff is just old. You know, we've been talking about drills and saws mm-hmm. and everything. It's like my old drill. You know what? I think it's a it's one of the old fourteen volt. Oh, with the uh the the stick battery that no, goes no, no, up no, no. into it no not the sticks not the sticks I did yeah. have an old uh, I think it was maybe a Makita mm-hmm. that was that was one of the sticks no but it was just it's just a standard you know Dewalt kind mm-hmm. of style battery okay. but it was just fourteen volt um, yeah. and yeah it's just old and you know those are definitely needed needing of replacing and of course with your job you know being a mechanic uh, you know of the uh, of the boat persuasion <laughs> you kind of <laughs> you, you you need you Everything. need a lot more tools but i just you know doing what i do normally and you know projects and whatnot you just find you need stuff oh i was kind of embarrassed i did my oil change uh this morning and you know having moved and all i don't have access to the tools i did before yeah, yeah. At the old place and i didn't even have what i needed for an oil change i had to go to my friend's house oh, i mean goodness. granted i could have just stole you know, now all you need, stool, all you need stool, is a but, hammer and a and a screwdriver. Just pop that into the oil filter, get it everywhere. Pop that thing out; it'll be great. And ironically, uh, a metric socket for my 2003 Chevrolet. <laughs> oh yeah, that <laughs> took a 15. So really? it's not just yours. Yeah, I was wow. surprised because normally it's five eighths. Uh huh. No. Nope. Yes, this is the All Mechanics Podcast. What's Thanks a for 15? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's it's fifteen uh, parsecs, uh, only twelve if you round down. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's 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 crazy. Just the the amount of stuff you know you you need you know like being a homeowner myself and you know you kind of doing your thing. It's just, just the amount of tools that if you're handy, mm-hmm. if if you and, and and trust me, I understand there are a ton of people that that are not geared that way, and uh, and and that's how people make money. 
You know, yeah. you, do, you do need, you know, the people that don't know how to do that stuff and to pay the, you know, the auto mechanics or the, the hand, your local handyman and all that. I mean, heck, I had to have some uh, exhaust work done on my truck and a guy was able to bing, bam, boom, do a quick repair. And, and that wasn't something that I could do because I don't have a welder. <laughs> right. <laughs> and how often are you going to need a welder to justify buying it? <laughs> it's one of those things. I kind of almost wish I did have one, but I mean, yeah, it would just sit in a corner. That's something where you'd have to have like five friends who rarely weld, yeah. come together, buy it together, and then just share it amongst themselves. Yeah, but, for sure. But, you know, the problem with... uh with being a handyman now, I mean, yeah, you still save money, but it's still very expensive to get into that. I mean, like just in general woodworking, you oh, know, yeah. for me to renovate my living space, you're looking at dropping like a thousand dollars and just woodworking tools if you want a good chop saw and oh, all yeah. the other stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've got a lot of work that I want to do in the house and, uh, oh goodness, just swapping out a lot of, um, hardware on everything from the doors to the cabinets. Mm-hmm. So I need to refinish all the cabinetry, redo countertops, uh, a lot of painting. I mean, a lot of the stuff here is okay, but I do need to do a lot of painting. But, you know, I also have some furniture needs that I'm thinking about and another bookshelf. And uh, as, you can, as, you can, <laughs> as you can see, it just continues. Yeah, you to need get. to double that. <laughs> well, I just I just picked up a few more books. The uh, the Fire and Blood book came out, mm. uh, which was the uh, well, kind of a prequel to the Game of Thrones books, which it is fantastic and it's huge. Mm-hmm. And then they also put out the uh, the Fall of Gondolin, which was uh, another uh, kind of lore from uh, from J R Tolkien. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I picked up a few more books. It's just books everywhere. There's just <laughs> there's just books all over this little case. And it's, well, it's not a little case. It's a decent sized case just have too many books yeah i'm gonna be building one here soon i've got maybe well i never collected a lot of books the ones that i do own i've kind of outgrown but now that i'm you know building my star wars collection back up obviously i'll be building a shelf here soon well i've got one one shelf in Uh this that is just solely (laughs) all the uh new jedi order books which is of course kind of why i wanted to do this podcast because i read all those aftermath old republic uh a couple of other, you know, just general Star Wars books and stuff. Got my little X-Wing model over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so, yeah, it just that. And, you know, I want to build a coffee table and, you know, some other other things, man. It's just always something. Something when you're handy. You, you always got an idea. And then uh, we're in winter, so I can't really do it ton of crap right but, unless you have a heated garage you're kind of just stuck well which it's worth heating a garage honestly well where I, i'm at we have a furnace yeah, in the garage and it's God, good it's nice well i need to finish my garage so i need to insulate and drywall and i'll probably i don't think i'm gonna necessarily put like a wood burner out there but i do need to get like maybe like a propane kind of thing just to warm it up while i'm out there but yeah For no sure. it's it's always it's always something something more but uh, but yeah, it's it's been an interesting uh, couple weeks, and and obviously we've got this last little bit of December, and we say goodbye, and we you know say hello to two thousand and nineteen, which uh, whew, should be kind of a fun year because I I've actually got some anticipated trips. Uh, one of the most notable is celebration in April to uh, Chicago. And that should be a lot of fun. I'll hopefully, uh, we'll get some mobile stuff going there and, you know, do the convention thing because that, that's the big one. Obviously, they didn't have that last year or this year. But, uh, but yeah, it should be really fun. And then might be another additional trip to Texas planned out with, uh, with another podcast. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just other, other things going on. So and maybe someday be he'll invite me to one of those trips, you know. <laughs> Granted, I couldn't afford the Chicago one. <laughs> well, that one, yeah, that was, that was kind a of little a, pricey for me. That was but. a spur of the moment and pricey. And honestly, I didn't even want to spend the amount of money I, that I, because I got one of their VIP tickets. And I totally, I, we were all kind of trying for it, me and my friends that are going. I was like, well, you know what? I would be okay if I didn't get the VIP pass because five day passes were, were 220. I think they were 225. And I was like, well, okay. The VIP passes are ridiculous. And, um, 
I was like, I'm not going to get it anyway. Mm-hmm. But I just happened to hit refresh at the right time. I didn't. I wasn't in the queue. I was just straight in. I didn't even have to wait in queue. I was just straight into the purchase page. I was like, oh, crap. I didn't really want this. Oh, I just wanted to say I tried. <laughs> oh, crap. Well, now I have to do it. Uh, so I did, and it's it's that was exuberant. But, you know, sometimes you have an exuberant purchase every now and again. It should be a lot of fun. It'll be an experience, a five-day Five day experience, and of course we have to pay for hotel. It'll be just like fifteen dudes in a in one hotel room or something. But <laughs> oh, no comment. It'll be three. Still no comment. Five guys, you know, whatever. Burgers and fries. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of what's been going on uh, here in the great state of Ohio. Obviously, a lot more to come. But uh, let's go ahead and pop over to the Hollow Net section. 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 Yeah. Yeah, a little, little word fumblage there. Uh, you you had something you wanted to talk about here today, so what do you got? I'm going to plug one of my favorite Star Wars-based YouTube channels here. Um, you're aware of Star Wars Theory. I think a no. lot of the people that listen are. No, I've, no, I've ne- they just started. Heard, you know that. I've never heard of that, that yeah. small, tiny little channel. Yeah, I mean, they have only got... Yeah, 1.37... 5, 5 billion views. Yeah, 1.37 million subscribers you know that, yeah that's nothing that's nothing. It, yeah no it's it's a big it's a big channel yeah yeah and they do some pretty cool content i always like their stuff but you know what i always thought while listening suck? to their stuff yes of course <laughs> what if this just can't be a visual concept why why does it have mm-hmm. to be just talking about why can't it just be a movie well now it's a movie guys yeah darth austin why can't we do that sort of stuff like visual stuff Money. <laughs> <laughs> we got a camera. <laughs> One day we'll we'll, we'll, yeah. well. Well, I'll tell you what, though, we do have some visual stuff. If you head on over to our Patreon page, if you'd like to support the podcast, you can head over to Patreon. We do have our um, Dinner with the Patron series there, which is just basically we sit down and get some food and might actually try and do that tonight. Uh, get a little food and just have a general conversation with uh, with our patrons and and you know just have a little bit of fun but no it's a, it's a it's a good bit of fun and just a little bit of extra content if you choose to support the podcast but again none of that is ever mandatory it's just something that'll help us along with new gear and and so on and so forth as we go along and also make sure to get all these cheap plugs out of the way uh, check us out on facebook.com we are there you can send us uh, any theories or anything you just like to talk to us about uh, through the old uh, the the D- DMs, as the young people call them, hit us up in the DMs. Is that how they say it? You're younger than I Sure. Am. Okay. But What's DMs? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, something about D, but anyway, uh, you can check us out on Facebook. We are, of course, there. Darth Austin posts a ton of little funny memes. I think he posted quite a few this week. Um, so there, there's there's that. And if you'd like to, you know, I don't know, maybe send us a book or something, like a long form, you can hit us up at our uh, email address. That's tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. End of cheap plugs. All right, go. <laughs> All right, and while he was being shameless, I just want to mention here, you know, I just imagine us trying to make a Star Wars movie, and it'd be like me holding my hand out and you jumping up in the air <laughs> holding your neck while, you know, twiddling we're, your legs we're, we're, over and over again. We are professional actors yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you make a Star Wars movie when you were younger? You no, were part it was, of something for school? Yeah, there was. so we had the, the talent show. And one year we did, uh, th- there was a Star Wars rap. Uh, and we did a, uh, just a, just a, a, a little act. Yeah. I don't know. A little acted out thing doing the scene, uh, with the rap going on. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was super goofy, but it, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. So it was pre that was epic. High school. That was pre epic rap battles of history. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was more than 10 years ago. It was 12 right. years ago. Yeah. That's that's great. But anyway, so Star Wars Theory has finally come out with their own little, uh, I don't want to call it a series, we'll just call it a mini movie. Yeah, mini movies, mini yeah. series, yeah. So they, I believe they um, used one of the Kickstart uh, websites to fund this, and they've been trying to for months now. Oh, did they? So it's a multi-episode um, thing going on about Vader. 
Um, and it's titled Vader Episode One Shards of the Past. Yeah. So we watched that right before we um, started this and just thought I'd get your general opinion of it, you know? Yeah, yeah very interesting concept. Now, the Vader comics, uh, I, I actually, I'm probably, I'm definitely behind a few uh, editions of that, but started reading those and those were super good. Like the, I mean the, the panels were great, but the, the idea behind it was great. It was basically after Vader, um, you know, it had, had, had a, you know, his legectomies and, uh, <laughs> got a little, little crispy. Um, but basically there was a one part of one of the comics where, because Vader was trying to construct the light, his lightsaber, mm-hmm. and part of constructing a lightsaber for a Sith is essentially turning the Kyber crystal. So, and but the Kyber crystal, being somewhat living and I almost in a way semi sentient, uh, fights back. So it shows him a vision of what he could do to potentially turn back the light, and the whole sequence of events was basically he. He comes back to the Emperor. He has a lightsaber. And I think he just took the Master's lightsaber that he was supposed to kill and take the crystal. And so he, he holds it out, and the, and the Emperor's talking to him, and he ignites it, and it's green, I think. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly, it was green. And instead of red. So then, you know, the Emperor's like, oh, so be it. And they fight, and uh, Vader kills the Emperor. And in the very last panel... Uh, he goes and finds Obi-Wan. He returns to Obi-Wan. But of course, this was a vision of the Kyber Crystal fighting back. And but you know, obviously that didn't happen. And Vader <clears throat> turns to the dark side, he comes back with a red lightsaber. And then we continue on with the series. Now, this series seems to be kind of that same sort of concept, but may, maybe to this, it, it's sort of like what. Vader's struggles, or do we have it? Was it is it only one episode coming out now, or do they have more? They will <clears throat> be coming out with more. I'm not sure if they have yet. Let me check while you're talking. Real no, you're quick. fine. So, I, I was just, I think when you originally were describing it to me, it was kind of like Vader weighing his choices and sort of like what I mean, light or dark, his inner conflict, or something like that. But did they yeah. actually put anything out saying this was just like more like a direct prequel to what was going to happen, or was it an alternate reality? Based on the channel, I'm going to say it's probably an alternate reality because okay. they have done quite a few on um, Darth Vader turning on the Emperor okay. before. Yeah, I mean because the story of him actually just turn, you know, and just being like it would have been going through to the original series. Okay, that that story's been told, so an alternate reality would be probably fresher. I would say. But yeah, I mean, that, that's a common question. What would have happened if Vader just, uh, again, in the comics, you know, when uh, Palpatine tells him that, that Padme's dead, he goes nuts and he just, he basically throws the Emperor back. Mm-hmm. You know, he hurts the Emperor. And in my opinion, Vader was 10 times stronger than the Emperor. And I'll pick a, I'll pick a little bit on this episode once we get into it. But um, at that point, he did kind of fight back, and then he kind of calmed down a little bit, and the Emperor basically shocks him a little bit and said, don't ever do that again type yeah. of deal. Yeah. Um, so we did kind of see some of that, some of that fight. But so, so go, go on a little bit about this. Uh, to, to answer your question very quickly, there is not an episode two yet, okay. but um, they're very active on their channel about this. That came out. Um, one week ago, that episode. Oh, okay, so it's it's fairly new, gotcha. But since then, they've done a live Q&A, uh, talking specifically about that for two and a half hours. Um, they've done uh, three or four different videos kind of going over how they made it. They have one for the freeze frame, stop motion on the blaster bolts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On how yeah. they did that. Um, cool. This is how episode two will happen, Star Wars Fan Theory Vader. Um, how the ending scene was actually made. You know, they, they're very active on their channel about this, and that was just two days ago that they're yeah. um, talking about, you know, what, what to expect from episode two. 
I'm going to guess it's probably going to be a month or two in between. Really? This okay. was a, you know, for the 10-minute runtime, a lot of special effects. Um, yeah, it actually it actually was done pretty pretty darn well. I mean, there was a little bit of cheese in there, but it, sure. it, it a lot of the, from the effects standpoint, wasn't bad. Yeah, and I'm sure there's probably going to be some choreography mixed in. You, I'd be very surprised if we're not going to have a few lightsaber battles. So, well, I mean, yeah, yeah this episode definitely kind of ended up, you know, yep. sort of ended on, uh, yeah, it looks like there's going to be a battle. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you caught that um, basically what he was walking into, excuse me, still dealing with a cold here. A little stuffy. Um, what he was walking into at the end of the episode is actually what he considered the in his vision. So that was the yep. room he was walking into. Oh, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. And he gotcha. was kind of thinking about, oh, what would happen if... Yeah, it's probably something I'd have to I'd have to watch uh, again because yeah, I mean, basically the episode started out with essentially him confronting the emperor, and I think mm-hmm. it was he was like choking him in the opening. Yep. <laughs> they do a lot of like. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the bone crunching. <laughs> how many bones can he crunch but not kill somebody? I'm trying to remember how they did that in the original trilogy, like. Bone was it crunching? similar to that, that sound effect, or was it a little more that. realistic? I don't think I feel it like is. it was pretty similar, and now we're just picking it apart. Well, it's possible. But it was a lot I mean, like the original trilogy. It could have been thrown in well, there at any time. It was one but, of those things where, again, you know, it's like trying to get a monologue out when it's just yeah. like, just kill him. Right. So, yeah. you know, although I don't necessarily like the dealing of Snoke in The Last Jedi, that's how you kill an enemy. You just yes. kill him. Yeah. You, you don't sh- give him a chance. No, oh, oh no, we got to talk this out a little bit, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Classic James Bond uh, villain. Well, the, yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of that. Um, but yeah, so he 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 quote kills the emperor in the beginning, but winds up being like a well, okay. So let's do layers. So then he's like, oh, he sees this little vision of himself as a kid giving Padme that little necklace thing yeah. and and then her eyes turn all emperor and then it's like oh no it's the emperor giving him a vision and then he shocks the crap out of him and then he a wakes vision within a vision yeah and then he wakes up in Mustafar and he's all burnt and stuff he's like oh the emperor needs to see you so it was yeah. all a vision upon a vision upon a vision within a taco sorry South Park <laughs> reference a taco. yeah South Park reference uh, I like how they um, the makeup on Vader, yeah, without a suit, was not bad, really good, not actually. bad, not bad at all. Yeah, on point with episode, th- not quite obviously, yeah. they don't have the budget or the team for that, but pretty close to episode. It three. was, it was good for practical effect, it was because I think that was more like a practical makeup yeah. effect as opposed to a CGI, right? Which I like that more than CGI for I, the most part. I like practical effects a lot more as well. I um, appreciate it because it. For sure. There's a lot of work in the CGI, but there's just something about the art of practical effects, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, kind of moves on, and he does speak with the Emperor, and the Emperor is basically pushing his buttons. It's like, you know, the old, there's still conflict in you. Which I like. I like that dialogue. Yeah, I mean, strike me down, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, why are you holding back? Why are you being such a bee and all this good stuff? And then Vader doesn't do anything. Uh, he thinks about it, but he doesn't yeah. do anything. And and essentially, he's sent to Naboo to confront a Jedi. What Jedi could it be? Who do you think it is? I don't know, man. I don't know any Who Jedi. do you think it is? I've never, never... Uh, Who do you think it is, audience? Yeah, where's where's your guys' input? Mace Windu. <laughs> <laughs> He survived! Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> oh, God. And that's all I'll say, uh, because this is a family podcast. <laughs> well, there was a little bit of blue blue light happening there. Ooh. So, we'll, so. We'll, we'll just see on the next episode. No spoilers. But anyway... Um, Even yeah. though we just... Well, we spoiled, spoiled the that entire episode. episode, just not the next one. <laughs> but no, it was it was good. Uh, it, it was a good little piece of, of fan fan made uh, media. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you know, a little little bit of cheese here and there. Some of the voice acting. Actually, I didn't think the voice acting was was too bad. I thought no. the Vader voice was almost spot on. That was. was that was pretty good. Not uh, a big fan of Padme in general, but she doesn't have to play much. I'll of a tell part. you what, though the 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 woman that they 
cast for that does have that she she does have that jawline yeah that um oh my god i just blanked on her name <laughs> <laughs> oh, the actress Natalie. Natalie Portman. Yeah, it's like I can clearly f- picture her face, but I was like, "Oh, there's a name." Yeah, I mean, she had the same kind of jawline and everything, yeah, but it was just obviously a little bit different. Right. Uh, the little, little Annie uh, was a little bit scruffier looking, but yeah, it was, it was fun. Oh my goodness! Didn't have the bowl haircut. <laughs> no, it was more of a little seventies Luke type of thing going I was thinking on there. Quite gone hair. <laughs> well, now quite gonna have the longer hair. He didn't His quite hair was kind of long. Hey, it, it was it shoulder was, length. It was longer. Yeah. It was longer. But yeah, I mean, a, a very interesting episode. Uh, be interested to see what they come through to the conclusion. I, I'm, I'm interested at how long they're even going to run it. Yeah. Did they I mean, say that I, at all? No. Uh, they might have in the past, but I haven't watched them for a while, so I'm gotcha. not too up on uh, news on that. Maybe we'll take a look at the... Um, the Q&A for a little bit while we're going to get food for the uh, dinner with patrons. Yeah. Might be able to mention a little bit more about that. Yeah, but yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll, pro- we'll check back on that. And uh, like I said, I, I, like, uh, I like theories. I like when people come out and, and contribute to the universe. I mean, obviously, the books that we're reading now uh, were not all written by the same writers. It was all a collaborative effort across years to bring out a series that kind of embodies that different people's views. And, and I mean, some of it will just piss you off and some of it won't like Chewbacca. I mean, I, I still am a little salty about that, but, but then other things they come through and they, they provide great things like, you know, the, the twins, the solo twins and, um, you know, things that we don't have in Canon anymore. Yeah, and just think, if it wasn't for us, there could be a generation someday that would read these books, you know, find them at dusty old <laughs> Jedi Temple Library and say, wow, this is an amazing fan theory. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is now. But anyway, uh, so yeah. Yeah, good pull on that. We'll definitely check back with that as time goes by. Uh, but I think right now we m- will switch gears a little bit, and let's get into the reread. We are looking at chapter 23 only into a couple more web. only a couple more left and we're then we're there. done into the web and one of them is actually so short by the way the end chapter is really short yeah we might just have to throw that in with another chapter <clears throat> because i wasn't expecting that but no it was what three episodes or th- three episodes three episodes long Three pages long. <laughs> well, y- you you <laughs> Maybe have five. you have yeah. Chapter twenty five is extremely short. Maybe right. yeah, one two five five. Well, four and a half pages, and then there's the <laughs> the eulogy. I guess we could sandwich those two together and make three more out of this. Yeah, because there's quite Probably. a bit to talk to on twenty five. That was an emotional chapter. <laughs> it's emotional. <laughs> Made me cry. So yeah, we'll 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 see when we get into that. And then obviously after we finish this book, we'll have a recap episode kind of going through the entire book. Yep. And then uh then we'll kind of preface the next book and and you know, get into that, give you a little time to get the next book in the series, which sure. is uh goodness, what is the next book in the series? You should know this. Well, this this actually was a... I just read the name of it last night, well, too. You, I really you, should know You this. need to look, because my book was like one of the original pressings. Yeah, mine has it. Yeah, let yeah me so it, it, it actually only has that. <laughs> it's in the front, <laughs> very front. Uh, it's got it in the back, too. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be and, well, it actually has a couple of uh, pages for it. Oh, okay. So okay. Uh, book two is The New Jedi Order, Agents of Chaos, Heroes. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so by the, James Luceno. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so we get in the Agents of Chaos. There's two books to that, yeah. and then uh, then we'll move on from there. Yeah. Okay. I, f- I forgot. I forgot. But yeah, I was I was looking in the book. It's like in most of these these books in the very beginning, they have like this whole timeline, which is really great. Yeah. But which be- ages the series in kind of a twinge of pain kind of way. It's like, oh, we're old. <laughs> right, but th- this right. actually is a first edition book. Right. Uh, so it doesn't have any. Of the right, rest and in mine there. has like probably <laughs> everything. Truthfully, if I'm I sure this, if I'm, I look back, I'm sure there. this book is worth tens of thousands of pennies. pennies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just picked this up at a half price bookstore. So I think anyway, I, was, I think mine was what two dollars. I think so at the half price yeah. bookstore. I've picked up all of them. I have like. 
five books already. I've spent ten dollars on it. Yeah, total. It's dead it's cheap. Amazing. Dead cheap. You know? Okie dokie. So let's get into chapter 23, Into, into the, the Web. web. Um, when we last left our our heroes, we had Jason and Jana's kind of, <laughs> well, we're going to go do things and, and uh, take Wonder over. Wonder Twins. Yeah, take over Uncle Luke's mission. And uh, basically they took the that ice drilling unit to, uh, to the Haleska system. And Jason was deposited into the system, and Jaina's just kind of running around for her life. And and essentially, we did find Miko and Danny, and Jason is getting ready for a, a blood rush. <laughs> blood rush. <laughs> you know what? I know that was that was hilarious when we first. Where did we first see that at? Blood rush. Yeah. Do you remember the context of that? Because I'm, I'm. Yeah, it was Mara. She had been uh, attacked by. Yaman car? Yaman car. That? Um, so was it Yaman doing the blood rush? Yeah, it was a okay. it was a poisonous creature. No, 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 no. She did it. She did it. She uh she was oh. attacked by a poisonous creature. Oh gosh. And yeah. she caused a blood rush to That's right. you know, flush all the poison out of her. I, I it's like I remember the reference, but I couldn't I couldn't exactly remember where we read that for some reason. But yeah, that's been a running a running joke. That's a that'll be a t shirt. Blood rush. It will be. It'll be our first <clears throat> official t shirt. And then and then we'll have the logo t shirt after that. Yeah. Our logo. <laughs> One day we'll get on all that. So anyway, we start uh, through the point of view of Prefect Degara. Through the, through the uh, eyes of the war coordinator, by the way. Oh, geez. It's through the view of someone, through the view of uh, someone. Get out of here. Through the view of yes, Taco. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Degara watched another coral skipper explode into a shower of flashing bits. All glory to you, warrior, he mumbled reverently. Then appropriately, fo- uh, the appropriate fo- farewell, <laughs> farewell to one killed gloriously in battle. Um, so... Essentially, right here, you know, we're still dealing with some of the aftermaths of of the of the battle on Lando's planet, and, and again, we we had kind of had the view of Degara. I think it was in the last chapter where he was like, "This is just a probe. This was us probing in here. This was us getting getting intel on on sort of how they're going to fight us." So Degara is not worried. He's not he's not worried at all, and they still have a formidable bit of their fleet. Remaining in the Haleska system, waiting, waiting for our, our heroes, the Rejuvenator and the Falcon and some other little ships to come out. And, and it's play. just Rejuvenator. It's not the Rejuvenator. Remember? Well, guess what? I'm going to say the Rejuvenator because it sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, Rice smile spread across the eager prefix face. The victory this day would be major, greater by far than the death of Belkanen or of Cernpiddle. Uh, Cernpiddle is pretty sad. Very. Don't want to talk about it. (laughs) Yeah. Now, this was interesting. So they said they are joined. The prefect communicated to his war coordinator. Who's joined? What are they talking about? Well, we'll get to that here in a minute because somebody's going to spot what that means. Mm -hmm. But by God, they're all joined. In they came. The prefect Degara waited eagerly. So then we switch switch point of views. There's a lot of switching. 30th time. <laughs> it's great. Han kept the Falcon back as the bulk of his fleet soared in, as did Luke with the Jade Saber, both of them keeping a protective watch about Jaina and her defenseless carry ship. Given the beginning of the battle, the route on the far side of the sun, it seemed as if Commander Rojo... Is that how we decided we were going to say Rojo? It? Rojo. I think I said Ro- it was Rojo, Rojo. right? <laughs> Rojo, Jojo, yeah. <laughs> Rojo, I don't know what I was thinking back then. Had been correct in his estimation of the enemy forces. Now, with the brief respite, Han had to find out about his oldest son. Where's your brother? And then, Luke, I need you. <laughs> Where's your brother? <laughs> Call to Jana. Luke, I need you. He's given a lot of commands here. He's very mm-hmm. all over the place. Oh, I heard came the response. We'll get to the planet as soon as the rejuvenator. See, they do it, it says once. There you go. I lo- they're so inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> and her escort clears. Luke's voice trailed off. Thousands of coral skippers had come at the approaching fleet. 
thousands, thousands of coral skippers. Zipping and zooming. Zipping. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Zipping and zooming. Oh, so essentially, again, here here comes here comes the the major space fight fight. Get on those, get those guns singing, kid. Don't call me kid. Came Lando. <laughs> of course, he was talking to Anakin, not Lando. Yeah. So La- Lando and Anakin are on the guns of the Falcon. They're weaving in and out of these thousands of coral skippers. You have the rejuvenator. Uh, you know, basically, they're trying to pound the planet. They're not. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got to defend yourself against the thousands of coral skippers. How many? How many coral skippers were they? Thousands. Were they? Thousands. Gotcha. Keep bananas. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, and you've got a couple of, uh, let's see, Ranger gunships. Uh, so, so it's a firefight. It's mm-hmm. a massive firefight of bolts going out from everything the, the Republican basically crank at them at this point. And the Corps Skippers are, uh, are actually providing a little bit more of a threat than they had beforehand, which is interesting. I wonder why. Well, Han thinks it's impressive. And then Leia, eh, you know, she's like, well, yeah, whatever, Hans. Yeah, it's like, okay, whatever. Oh, but they're starting to lose a little bit of ground. This isn't even a long, drawn-out fight. One of the Ranger gunships exploded yep. as a larger coral skipper rushed into it. Blood. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. And then the other part here is, you know, they're – they're, I don't know. Do you want to say they're shooting the gravity wells, or how do we want to describe that? <sighs> gravity wells are happening. They're trying to clap shields. Which they're not going to do by shooting them, so I don't... Yeah, it doesn't we, make a whole lot of sense. Their plan to find, is not that great. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to find the best descriptive word here. So, uh, again, they want to con- uh, concentrate on the rejuvenator here, so they're... They're trying to use these gravity wells to collapse the shields, but that isn't happening. But the coral skippers are kind of skimming the shields, and, right. and they're trying to they're trying to break through. But to this point, they're holding. At this point, they're really just worried about the coral skippers. They can't, you know, really deal with anything else right now. Right. But Han does say here they've got a gravity well, a big one. Yeah. Like the one we saw in Serpital. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, here's another thing. I don't really think that this was so much of a thing in our previous chapters, but they also continue to say there are a couple coral skippers here, and this this one in specific. The coral skipper continued to somehow absorb the laser blasts, bending them into a field of such tremendous gravity that they seem to simply disappear. Yeah, that's new. Oh. <laughs> that's quite new. Oh, shiitake mushroom. Goodness. Um, oh, let's see here. Let's pop around here. Han and Leia heard other nearby pilots screaming for the gunship's commanders to get out of there. And so they seem to be trying, breaking off their attack and turning tail to the coral skipper. But they couldn't break free and began inadvertently circling the coral skipper. So the coral skipper is this coral skipper basically uh, has its own planetary alignment of yep. ships. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Faster and faster they went, tighter and tighter the orbit. They came crashing together, all three. And at that precise moment, the coral skipper gravity well that needs an S, the coral skipper gravity well, the coral skipper's gravity well, whatever, dissipated. And they all went up in a tremendous flash of brilliant light. So they've taken out the gunships. This is all happening very quickly, folks. This, this isn't like... But so, so now we have, we have our standard little coral skippers. And now we've got bigger, badder coral skippers that can literally dissipate blaster bolt energy. Yep. And create an orbit around it. <laughs> To crash ships. What the hell kind of technology are we dealing with here, man? I think they got a power. Uh, they got like two or three power ups at once from Mario Kart. I'm calling <laughs> shenanigans here. <laughs> Did they hit the question blocks all at once? <laughs> oh, well, Leia then remarks, they're better than we thought. No. 
Even then, though he just said earlier they're better than they used to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kip uh, chimes in here, and, and if you'll remember, he's uh, he's got a little X-Wing squadron. Give us support, Rejuvenator. But the Rejuvenator had Not her hands. The Rejuvenator. I'm just saying the had her hands full, coral skippers buzzing her from all angles and somehow avoiding her devastating cannon arrays. Oh, well, I, I want to skip just a little bit here. So, <clears throat> I don't Are we changing perspectives here? Uh, or? not yet. Let me okay. let me Okay. We are going to change perspectives before I want to talk about what I want to talk about. But essentially the uh top gun Anakin's gun on the Falcon stopped shooting. Mm-hmm. So at this point Han's like, you know, holy crap, did we get hit? Did they just yeah. blast him away? And then that leaves this perspective and moves on to Commander Rojo. <laughs> Rojo Jojo. Yeah, Rojo. Uh, the coordination of the Coro Skipper's attack against his prize ships was nothing short of brilliant. And those Starfighter squadrons sent out to run guard for the Rejuvenator had all they could handle in running guard for themselves. Even worse, while the gravity wells coming at the Star Destroyer didn't seem anywhere near strong enough to tear her shields away, the stunning focus of targets by the Coral Skippers coming in at different angles but attacking the very same spots was drastically weakening areas of the Star Destroyer's defensive arrays. They're like little hornets, basically. Yeah, basically. Once one hits, they're all a hive mind. Yeah, <laughs> They'll exactly. all hit the same exact spot. So Rojo does sort of think to himself, they had to find a weak spot. Damage reports chiming in from all about him, uh, relating mountain of problems that the Rejuvenator and relating going around the fleet. You know, he's basically just got warning buzzers, you know. Yeah. Commander Rojo. Check engine light is on. <laughs> SBS is on. Service engine light is flashing. Oh, God. (laughs) The oil lamp's on. Oh, my goodness. Commander Rojo knew that he was running out of time. Annie wasn't hurt. Well, Annie wasn't hurt. Little Annie. But neither did he begin to respond. So this is kind of where we're starting to think a little bit. So we had talked about the coordination. Well, Anakin for some reason, can't think and gun at the same time, which, uh, you know, it's a lot like walking and chewing bubble gum, yeah. I guess. But he says they've joined. Just like me and Jana and Jason in the asteroid belt. Just good flying, kid. Yeah, that was Leia saying that. Mm-hmm. And then Han said, I've seen better. For the second time. Make yeah. up your mind, Han. Do you like them or not? Do you yeah. think they're good or not? He doesn't care. The better they get, the worse he thinks they are. Right. That's a good character flaw of his. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, again, Anakin's seeing now that there's something. It's not the Force, but it's something like the Force that they're connected with. They're able to coordinate. It's not just a squadron of ships. It's the entire fleet of coral skippers. They're all interconnected. Mm-hmm. They're all coordinating attack. They have an advantage. I mean, I'd hate to say it. They have a lot of advantages, but this being so coordinated with, without much effort is a big freaking problem. Like I said, hive mine, shields, gravity well. Volcano, shenanigans. rockets. Shenanigans. How do you hit that many question mark boxes at once? <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. They call bull crap. Well, guess what? Anakin gets back to his guns. I guess he got a thought <laughs> Oh, the battle continued to deteriorate for the New Republic forces, and the primary target of the enemy obviously was Rejuvenator, the Rejuvenator, with a swarm of coral skippers buzzing her, nipping at her shields and stinging her hull beneath. <clears throat> Cough break. We've, <laughs> we've got to get to Rojo, Luke called to Han. We've got to get those fighters off him and buy him some time. Because, again, remember, the Rejuvenator is, is bombarding the planet. That's what their main task was, but obviously it's kind of turning away from that. Great, Han muttered, muttered sarcastically. Now I'm running bodyguard for a Star Destroyer. <laughs> you see anything crazy about that? Just a little. A little bit. I was like 20 years ago, man. Come on. Yeah. So now we're going to get in uh, to what Jason's been up to. We have epic star battle. Oh, yeah, there's Jason. Jason. Right? Jason. 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 
Well, Jason almost got a second use in Vong right through the chest with his lightsaber, but the warrior was faster than he had anticipated and arched back enough so that the weapon barely nicked. And then the other circled the young Jedi, two producing thud bugs, and the other pulling club-like melee weapons from their bandoliers. Thud bugs. <laughs> thud Such bugs. Such a stupid name. <laughs> Uh, maybe the Yuz and Vong have a better name. I don't know. They're black, black, black. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what their lang- language is. But yeah, so Jason's uh, fighting, I think it was like about four or five of these guys. Mm-hmm. <sighs> a little oh, cock- stupid. <clears throat> oh, whatever. <clears throat> but Jason did set his blade out in a wide sweeping arc, forcing those closest back. Seeing the opening, he leapt across the hole in the floor, forcing the Yuzen Vong to follow. Two loose their thug, thud bugs, the little living missiles, <laughs> Whip, <laughs> little living missiles, whipping out for Jason. His lightsaber flashed right, then down and left, picking them off. Good job, Jason. For the Yuzen Vong. Neo. Neo. Oh, God. <laughs> For the Yuzen Vong came rushing around the hole, the fifth reaching for another living missile. But as he did come to the rescue, Super Danny jumps on top of him, clawing his face, and he puts her finger in his nose and does stuff. <laughs> That's the best reread ever. And then she does stuff. <laughs> You can read that part yourself. Yeah, just got her finger in his nose. <clears throat> anyway, she's trying to get, get the little star creature, the Gnolith, Gnolith. You want to pronounce that? The Yugolith. No, 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 no. no. Oh, nope, the, they name it. The starfish. Gnolith. Gnolith? I don't know. What Newlith. It. Starfish thing. <clears throat> Patrick. Patrick Star on his face. And as Danny tried to remove Patrick Star from <laughs> the box face. Well, she basically doesn't quite get that, but she she's pretty smart. She's she's pretty smart here. So then she goes for the Ugolith Muscure to take it off and then uh shoves him down in the in the freezing water, which <clears throat> which um, you know, without that, I mean you're you're Gross. talking shock, you know. Yep. Oh, and he went head first. And though his breather remained somewhat in place, the blood rush of water <laughs> slipped down his throat and into his lungs. And even worse for the warrior, his protective suit did not hold the Ugolith cloaker, or not Maskier cloaker. We got to make that distinction. The, the Maskier changes your image, the cloaker is like a wetsuit. Because that Can, makes sense. <laughs> hey, man, they're both Ugoliths, but it's all good. Continued its retraction. The freezing water sucked the heat out of the thrashing use and Vong's exposed body. And then as he tried to turn about the chamber and did man, he tried to turn about for the too chamber. Late. And, yeah, too late. Yeah, but too late. So he's basically an icicle, which is fun. However, <laughs> poor Danny, not being a Jedi or anything, uh, <laughs> or is she? Ooh. Anyway, another using Vong let a thud bug uh, fly at her, hit her square in the chest, and whoop, she's down. Down for the count. One, two, three, you're out of here. And then the blood rush caused no her to blood puke. Rushes. <laughs> blood. Changing gears, the Falcon's cannons top and bottom thundered away. Most of all, it was Anakin in the top pod keeping the increasing number of coral skippers off the Falcon. Come on, Lando. <clears throat> His work with the guns, spinning side to side, tracking, leading perfectly, proved nothing less than spectacular. The Jade Saber with better gun control. Oh, oh no. <laughs> better guns on the Jade Saber? I think Han would have something to say about that. <clears throat> I wonder which one fires first. It's always Han. Yeah. No matter how many times they remaster it, it was always Han. Yep. Well, here we have kind of a sad moment, uh, Roho cried out one last time. Then his ship was gone. Yeah. His ship flaming and angling down past the fourth planet, a rush of internal explosions coming up. He's And the, the Coral Skipper's just still barraging yeah. him. He's already dead. The, the ship's gone, but they're still, they want to just disintegrate. And they even, you know, mentioned that. It was yep. purely overkill. Pure overkill. Poor Rejuvenator was already dead. <sighs> Well, moving on from that, 
Jason. Back, Jason. Back, to, back to happier things. Jason. <laughs> Jason's blocked and bleh, Jason blocked the swing of a club. Which, by the way, did they distinguish if this is the same club that Mara had to deal with that would... I would assume so. Because why else would oh, the, he not no, just he slice had the, through He had it? the snake thing, right? Right. Is this No, that? no, no, no. Then I think this is a club. Why can't <clears throat> Jason just cut through the club? <laughs> Hey, stop being logical. I like the snake thing. Snake thing I is too. cool. I want to see more. Why snake couldn't they stuff? have that in any of the video games? Why couldn't that have been an extra weapon in like Kotor? Was there <laughs> was there ever a video game with using Vong? No, in it? I was about to say I didn't think there was. I don't so. think so. You will never see them now. <laughs> By God, that'll be our Kickstarter. Using Vong video game. It'll be the new Jedi Order video game featuring snake things and using Vong. It'll be great. It'll be an RPG with all the. Freaking books in one game. <laughs> it'll, it'll 20 be, years from now. It'll be a Star Wars Skyrim. <laughs> Blood Rush edition. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the game of the year edition. When we hit it big, it'll be oh, Blood, Blood Rush, Rush edition. Instead of Platinum. With all oh, the DLC goodness. content. <laughs> that would be great. Which is just us reading this. That's what the DLC will be. Jeez, <laughs> oh, what a cheap, cheap, cheap thing. We'll Kickstarter do. time. Yeah, Kickstarter. Well, okay, so... So, J- Jason, lightsabers versus wooden clubs. Continue. Well, they might not be. They're probably not wooden. They're probably living in some way, shape, or form. But but basically, you know, again, Jason is taking on four at this time, and, and he's thinking to himself, maybe I could defeat one. I could definitely defeat one. Maybe two, but three and four, he's basically seeing sort of the, the futility of this fight. He doesn't have the ability to to fight all of these guys all at once. And indeed, he did see the two aliens over there coming at him and hard, took a moment to register the truth of the attack to see the human hand covering each face, tearing at the mask. What was that about uh, going to happier times? Oh, it's great. It's okay, good. let's jump to a... Let, this, this is getting intense. I'm let's happy. Just, Let's just jump to another perspective. Maybe this one will be happy. Copyright free music. Anyway, yeah. Miko. Miko's always <laughs> a pretty fun loving guy. Let's talk about Miko. You know, M- Miko was M- Miko was basically broken. And, yeah. and we know that. He had been severely tortured by the Yuzen Vong and the um the mosque and his tentacles. His mind was gone. But he does he does kind of uh sort of come to a little bit of sense here. He's the one who's uh, ta- trying to take on two Yuz and Vong here. Uh, he doesn't have a weapon, but he does uh, take their masks. Miko drove on, accepting the punishment in exchange for getting his fingers into that all-important Ugolith Cloaker release point. <laughs> Just this release point. Okay, never mind. That everyone knows about. <laughs> yeah. And as he had, the living suits began to retract. The battered young dre- Jedi dug his heels and pushed on even more powerfully, bearing his surprised em- enemies into the hole and going in right be- behind them. He felt the freezing water drawing out his life force, felt the thrashing, the punching, the kicks, but Miko, in his final act of defiance against Yuzen Vong, breaking, held on stubbornly, preventing the two warriors from scrambling back out of the hole, determined that he would not die before them. So, I mean, he essentially sacrifices himself or appears to sacrifice himself. We'll see. (laughs) No, he did. (laughs) He's dead. Oh, back in the chamber. So forget about Miko. Uh, One of the remaining (laughs) using Vong made the mistake of lurching towards the hole in an attempt to catch his fallen kin. Jason wasted no time leaping ahead, lightsaber flashing, going off, going forth the off-balance alien. And then when that warrior's companion came in, it came in to defend, turning the attack fast upon him, scoring a quick kill with a thrust to the chest. Woo, we got one. Danny, of course, wakes up at this point, and, you know, she's, she's worried about Miko. And, you know, Jason takes care of the other use in Vong, mm-hmm. but they need to get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. They need to get out of here. So Jason glanced around looking for solutions. They brought an extra suit and mask for him. Get into them. And then we he and then they dived in the hole. Danny suited went in a few moments later, bearing oh, one of the 
lichen torches so Susan Vong had carried into the chamber. She nearly he she nearly jumped right out of her Ugolith cloaker when Jason appeared suddenly before her, shaking his head gravely, indicating to her that Miko was dead. He took her hand and pulled her along the underside of the ice crust back to the waiting ship, and somehow they managed to squeeze in side by side. Who do you think was the big spoon? Danny. Danny. Got it. <laughs> she killed a cougar, man. Uh, of course she's the big spoon. <laughs> she's bad. All right. So then we're going back to a n- yet another point of view. Sun and horrified calls jumbled through the open channels on the bridge of both the Millennium Falcon and the Jade Saber after the destruction of the Rejuvenator. Most prominently among them, Kip Dern's cry for a general retreat. Jump into hyperspace, all the way back to Dunbrillion. Do it, Luke. Second in across all channels, all haste. Oh, Jaina on Mary Minor. The Mary, Mary Mi- Minor. See, happy times, Mary Minor. <laughs> Uncle Luke, Jason's still down there. Luke wins, not at the, her proclamation, but at the sight of another Ranger gunship blowing apart. We'll take you in, Jaina. Get close between the Falcon and the Jade Saber. We'll take you in. Oh, the battle disintegrated before them. New Republic starfighters, cruiser gunships vectoring away from the ice planet, each with a host of coral skipper, coral, 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 coral skippers in hot pursuit. So, full retreat. Full retreat. Uh, let's skip ahead just a wee bit here. Jason's little little stylish ship. Yeah. I'm not going to... I don't know. I want to still remain family. Why is family. it called a stylish ship, exactly? Well, I want I, I want to say what I, what, I, what I would generally call it, but I also want to keep us family friendly, yeah. so... Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it anyway. Oh, let's see here. But they do recapture Jason. And uh, locking coordinates for hyperspace. Oh... Not leaving him came a portion. Oh, yeah. So Jaina does, you know, ships Mary Miner's hit. I can hold it. (sighs) Anyway, they were able to pick up Jason and Danny's little style of ship. Oh, come on. You got to read the whole thing, man. It's actually pretty cool. Which, which, what what did you want read? The Mary Miner swooped between the lead ships, rushing straight out. To literally catch the leaping stylish ship with perfect timing. Okay. And before any of the four adults could offer any cry of congratulations, the Mary Minor disappeared, leaping to hyperspace. Wow, hyperspace to light speed. I went I went to another light universe speed. there for a second. To light speed with perfect precision. There you go. On the bridge of the Jade Saber. She's like, screw you, Uncle Luke, bye. <laughs> Mara glowed with pride and with awe. Both pilots on the bridge of the Millennium Falcon were struck. All but dumb. Until Han finally managed to whisper. The kid can fly. Yeah, I mean, that's like a big duh. Yeah, right. At this point. Oh, an explosion shook the Falcon, and then the ship dipped suddenly as a tractor beam from the surface nearly caught it. Ooh. Coral skippers are you know, coming at the ships. They had escaped barely, and so apparently adjacent. Still, none of them were ready to call this day anything close to a victory. Obviously. Yeah, they were completely beat. Yeah, um, and now we've the Yuzen Vong have displayed more technology, which is just so far ahead of what we've dealt with, and it's nuts. But is it good enough to beat Jaina's ship parkour? It's it's bananas. B a n a n a n a n a bananas. Yep, that's how you spell that. Yeah, a lot of N-A's. What do you think about this chapter? This is the this favorite is a, favorite chapter. Good chapter. It's the best chapter ever. I'll give it a thumbs middle. <laughs> is it a man? <laughs> Come on. No, no, it was a good chapter. Um Yeah, you it, know, it, it's a scary kinda, not quite a big death, but you know. Well, it, it's a scary chapter because now we're starting to see more of the capabilities of using Vong. Yeah, both more of their weapons. Both psychologically and, you know, just the intimidation factor of having a hive mind mm-hmm. fleet. I mean, God. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to think about it. So the New Republic, I mean, they were pretty confident. So they have the like the biggest, newest, great ship. 
and gunships and X-Wing squadrons and the legendary Millennium Falcon and Jade Saber and Master Skywalker and all this good stuff. And they were soundly beaten back. Mm-hmm. Soundly beaten here. Uh, just because they were able to escape, some of them were up, They were beaten. Yeah. They didn't do anything. Tail between their legs, sent home. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So... Goodness, what what do we have? I mean, what what do we have next? This is this is obviously you know there's so many books and this conflict yeah. lasts for a long time. So we've got a lot, lot to unpack in the coming books. But uh, yeah, I didn't think it was it was a bad chapter. It was a little yeah. bit longer than what we've been dealing with mm-hmm. recently, and, and we only have you know well two official chapters and then the eulogy. So basically, two more episodes of this mm-hmm. book. And then, man, we're doing a recap. We're getting out of the. We're getting out of Vector Prime and into Agents of Chaos, man. I'm excited to see where the. I've already finished the book, obviously. At this right. point, yeah. Um, I am very excited to see what direction they go with the next book. Well, I, I'm with you there. I'm with you there, and it should be should be a lot of fun as we continue on down the road. We've got 20 more years of books and all this yep. content, so. <laughs> Uh, well, I, God, I just, I just hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, I know we're. Well, it doesn't matter at this point. We're going to keep going whether you stop listening or not. <laughs> well, the funny thing we're is, we're invested, but we're actually getting quite a few listeners. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, uh, we're we're definitely getting some downloads. You know, every week when I drop an episode on Monday mornings at six a.m. Eastern Standard U.S. time, <clears throat> and it's been it's been encouraging. Uh, you know, just to see everything kind of grow and the view count go up or listen count go up. But, uh, but yeah, folks, if you want more content, you can always, uh, check out our Facebook page again, another shameless plug. Darth Austin needs some, some friends to talk to on Facebook. No one to talk to. (laughs) I need my apprentice. Oh goodness. But yeah, Facebook's out there. If you'd like to join on the Facebook page, send us any theories or just reactions, Reactions to the chapters that we read, uh, email address tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. We'll get you get your response there. And, uh, you know, our YouTube page is up. These episodes also go on YouTube, but we also have some more plans for, you know, for other content there as well. And then again, you know, Patreon, 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 Patreon. You're a, you're a patron if you're on Be Patreon. Be our patrons. <laughs> It's not mandatory. I just like to plug it because I do like the uh, I I like the dinner with the patron series. I like doing oh, I do that. Too. It's it's just kind of a fun little uh, you know, half hour, forty five minute talk, maybe hour talk at some points. Just uh, getting getting through some some life stuff. Man. And in fact, I think it's about time to go get Sunday to eat and do think one so. of those. I think Take we're a gonna break in between chapters here. I think we're going to. Then we'll maybe do a uh, end of year wrap up. You know, by the oh, time yeah. the next one will come in, it'll be the new year. So for sure, for sure. We're only what two days away now yeah but when yeah as we're as we're recording this yeah so yeah folks we appreciate you taking the journey through uh through these this book series with us uh you guys have a great rest of your week and as always may the force be with you